Welcome to my Shalom Zone. My name is Sherry Dawn, and it's my great honor and privilege to get to share this grace encounter with you today. Part of spiritual warfare is knowing what to do when your faith and your hope have suffered a crushing blow and you're tired and confused and maybe even a little bit mad. <laughs> and uh, really kind of in a position that you just don't want to do anything. You just want to sit and sulk. And it's those times that I truly, truly appreciate the Holy Spirit and His ministry here in the earth. But I want to be an instrument in His hand today to share with you some things to help you bounce back and to move forward because God is so not finished and he's not confused and if we're going to be in position to move forward with what he's got planned for right now and not be scrambling and you know just trying to even get on the same page then we need to take advantage of this time that we've been given do what scripture teaches and be prepared to move forward as he is moving. Now, in Mark chapter 6, uh, we have one of the uh, accounts in the Gospels of where Jesus sent forth his disciples two by two to heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, etc. And um, and it's during this time in Mark's account that we have also the record of the events that led up to the death of John the Baptist. So I'm not going to take time to read all that because I've got some other things that I want to read to you that you're going to be able to uh, put on a loop and play over and over and over to help feed your spirit, to help get you over the hump. And... Um, so I'm just, I'm just not going to read all this, but I, it's, it's in Mark chapter 6. Read it when you get an opportunity. I'm just going to hit the high points. In verses 12 and 13, when Jesus has sent them forth, the scripture says, They went out and preached that men should repent. Change your thinking. They cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. And then the very next verse says, King Herod heard of him. And he thought that, you know, John the Baptist was risen from the dead. And so he, they, the uh, writer goes into explaining what led up to the death of John the Baptist. Now, we have to understand that Jesus, you know, is releasing the goodness of God, the kingdom of God, into the earth it's affecting the environment. He's come out of the wilderness in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And he's releasing that not only on the people for their benefit, but now he's passed that same anointing on to these disciples. And they're doing the same thing. And so it's causing this ripple effect. And the enemy sees the kingdom spreading. So he retaliates. And one of the things that he does is he takes out the key player. He takes out John the Baptist. He has him beheaded. And in verses 30 and 31, the scripture says, The apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Now this is Jesus' response to the devil's assault against them all by having John the Baptist killed. He said, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place. And rest a while for there were many coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to eat so the first thing Jesus does is he calls them aside to rest a while and that's what I want to point out to you today is you've been praying you've been standing you've been believing God things did not pan out the way maybe that you thought they were supposed to and all of a sudden you're thinking well what now you know what do we do now we've got this dumpster fire has been handed to us what do we do now well we follow Jesus's example we pull aside and we rest in him we shift our thinking 
we allow him the opportunity to minister to us. When you go ahead and read this entire chapter of Mark chapter 6, you're going to find out that not only did he pull them aside, but people saw them leaving in the ship, going to a place where they could be alone, where they could, uh, you know, regroup, get refreshed, and they outran them around the shoreline and beat them to the place. And when Jesus gets out of the boat and he sees all these people wandering around, tore up, confused, upset, he was moved with compassion on them and he started teaching them. And then, you know, the day waxes on and he realizes that they're hungry. And so this is where he multiplies the five loaves and the two fish. So he calls them aside, he feeds them, and then after he sends the crowd away, he decides to go back up into the mountain and pray. So he sends the disciples away. And then he comes to them walking on the water. And I love what the scripture says in verse 50. Because he encouraged them when they were frightened by what they were seeing. Because this is just, they've just been on sensory overload for several days. And he says, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Then he goes on and he continues the work of the kingdom. So I want to encourage you today, in spite of everything that has transpired, the Lord is calling you to use these moments, these next few days, to pull aside, to draw near to him, to let him love on you and encourage you and refresh you because it's not over. That this, you know, the world has not come to an end. It may feel like it, you know, in your flesh, but it has not come to an end. God's kingdom plan and timeline has not changed. Man's timeline has had a little hiccup, burp, but God's hasn't changed. And the problem is that we get so focused on what's happening in the natural course of things, we forget the big picture sometimes. And so, that's what the pulling aside does. But we have to be deliberate about it. We have to on purpose do it. We find other accounts in Scripture in 1 Samuel 23 and verse 16 when David was running from Saul and he's got, you know, these between four and 600 men and their families that are, you know, in debt and distressed and, you know, just... It, it, they're messed up, but they're trying to follow him. They're wanting to do the right thing. They know he's been anointed king. And David knows he's been anointed king, but it's just not working out like what he thought it was supposed to. Here he is stuck in the wilderness, but he's been anointed king. And you know the enemy had to have been bombarding his mind. Well, you know, what if Samuel was just playing games with you? What if, what if, what if? Well, we don't deal with what ifs. We deal with the truths that we know about the character of God. God's good. That hasn't changed. But the scripture says in 1 Samuel 23 and verse 16 that Jonathan came to David where he was in the woods and he strengthened him, his hand, in the Lord. Now that is so precious because Jonathan means gift of God. David means beloved. And the gifts that God has given us through his grace, they're always ready to minister to us, whether we're in the wilderness, whether we're in the woods, whether we're in the city, whatever. But especially in those times when you deliberately choose to pull aside and just get quiet because your soul desperately needs contact with God, God's going to see to it that somebody comes to strengthen your hand in God. And it may come through, you know, a magazine article. It may come through a YouTube broadcast. It may come through a friend uh, making a phone call. But it will come. But we need to be looking for those things and giving God opportunity to minister to those things. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6, this is where... Uh, the families of all of these people had been camped in Ziklag and the Amalekites come and they attack Ziklag and they take David and David's family and all of the families of his men, they take them captive, they kidnap them. And when the men, you know, they've been off battling on behalf of somebody else and when they come back, their families have been taken hostage and they, they're crying, they're 
tired, they're discouraged, and then finally they just get mad and they're ready to stone David. But do you know what the scripture says David does? David encouraged himself in the Lord. And this is part of spiritual warfare. And if you don't get this part, you're going to flop in some of the others. We have to take time to encourage ourselves in the Lord because sometimes there is not always a Jonathan there. They may have been moved by the Spirit, nudged to come share with you, but sometimes they don't always obey. And so there are times we have to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Sometimes the very people that were called to stand alongside us and fight, they get so disgusted, they turn on us. Well, we can't waste time being caught up in wanting to revenge ourselves on them. We've got to look at what really matters. We've got to look at God. We've got to look at His kingdom agenda. We've got to refocus. Okay? So I want to give you five tips. I want to share those with you briefly. And then I want to give you the things that I believe the Lord has laid on my heart to fill your spirit, get your uh, heart and mind comforted and pointed back in the right direction and moving forward. Because as I said, the... The power of the Holy Spirit has been turned loose and ramped up in this earth. Revival is already, we're into the third great awakening. It may be the beginning stages, but we're into it. And God has got things for us to do, and we can't afford to sit and sulk. So, number one, I want to give you five tips. What now? <laughs> what do we do now? Number one, get quiet. Shut off the world's news feed and draw aside like Jesus had the disciples do. Come apart from all of the world's noise so that you won't come apart at the seams during battle. Number two, get in position. God's not playing games. He's not forgotten his promises. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We have to come to him. We have to position ourselves to receive the rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now see, the reason that rest is so important is because when your spirit is at rest, you can hear the directions of the Lord. You can understand the wisdom of God and move forward in the next step. But when you're all in a turmoil, when you're weeping and wailing and gnashing your teeth and kicking down the walls and just having a spiritual tantrum, it's very difficult to hear the voice of the Lord, even though you may be crying out, God, what am I supposed to do? God, what am I supposed to do? Get quiet, get in position, and he'll show you. He'll tell you. The truth of Psalm 23 has not changed. It's in the presence of our enemies that God prepares a table for us and anoints our head with oil and makes our cups run over. Position yourself for that. Expect it. Receive communion. I cannot stress that enough. I've shared with you out of Proverbs chapter 9 that the word that's used for eat when it's talking about eating wisdom's bread, it not only means to eat physically, but it literally means to make war, to battle, to overcome. Right now, you're needing to overcome your disappointment. You're needing to overcome your hurt. You're needing to overcome your frustration. You're needing to overcome fear. Go receive communion and it would be a good idea to listen to some teaching on communion to get your faith built back up in that because Jesus whipped death and hell and he marched out with the keys to death and hell his victory is our reality but we have to be reminded of that from time to time and we have to remember him in the middle of the mess so he can walk us out of it the way of escape the way of the exits that have been made. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 is through the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. So receive communion. And that probably takes us into tip number three. Get quiet, get in position now, get filled. Ephesians chapter 3. I want to read you verses 14 through 19. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, 
that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. This is where we're hurting, in our spirit. We need strengthened in our inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Rooted and grounded in love. Rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ. Know there is not talking about head knowledge. It's talking about experiential intimate knowledge. On the level of the intimacy between husband and wife. To know the love of Christ which passes head knowledge. That you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Yes, we fast. Yes, we pray. Yes, we seek the Lord. But the key to being filled with the fullness of God is to know the love of Christ. And so what I'm going to share with you is going to start you on that journey toward just getting absolutely filled up with the fact that God is love. And love is not this just passive, marshmallowy, warm, gooey feeling. The kind of love that God is, is powerful. It flung this whole universe into existence. It never fails. It's willing to sacrifice everything to rescue the beloved. You think he's going to step out of the game now and abandon you now? Not by a long shot he's not. But he reserves the right to be God and to do things his way. We don't tell him how to do. We go and seek him for wisdom to get in line with what he is doing. So get filled. And I'm going to provide for you in a few minutes some filling <laughs> to help you. Number four get focused <laughs> just get focused the word to the church is still come out of Babylon and be separate so that you don't receive of her plagues quit letting her tell you how to think and how to respond you are a king and a priest of the Most High God he has an assignment for you because he is determined to present the kingdoms of this world to the Lord Jesus Christ as his inheritance and we're part of that plan so choose to listen to the Word of God and to remember whose you are you've been bought with a price you're not your own glorify God in your body as well as in your spirit and finally number five get real <laughs> just get real tell God you're mad Tell him you're confused, but don't stop there. Tell him that you trust him, you trust his ways, you trust his timing. Submit to being loved back into proper perspective, into a kingdom mindset, and to a refreshing that you're a citizen of the much more realm of grace. The scripture says that where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And buddy, the sin has abounded throughout all of this mess. Now it's time for us to retaliate in the love and the grace of God and let the much more abounding grace do what it's designed to do. So, with all of that in your thinking, I'm going to take the next few minutes and I'm going to go back through the little book that the Lord had me do several years ago when he inspired me to take verses in every place where it used the word God or Jesus or the Lord or one of the personal pronouns he or him and insert the word in all capital letters love because God is love so that I could get a deeper awareness in my heart that all of these scriptures that are referring to the Lord are actually referring to that sacrificial love, that powerful love that never fails, that powerful love that can penetrate past the barriers of logic and reason and touch hearts that are hungry and desperate but have absolutely no idea where to go to be fed. That kind of love is what we need to transform and to change our thinking and to change and transform the world around us. God has still got his eye on saving nation all about. We've not lost. We've had a setback. 
But the kingdom hasn't changed. The purpose hasn't changed. And we have to be reminded of that. So part of spiritual warfare is drawing aside into those little desert places and taking advantage of them instead of fussing about having to be out there in the desert. Take advantage of this time because believe you me, grace explosions are on the way. And God's going to be needing you uh, up front and center moving and able to hear and be led. This time is a time of preparation. So I'm just going to start reading you. And instead of saying God or Jesus or the Lord in these verses, I'm going to say love because God is love according to the scripture in uh, 1 John the first one that I want to start out with is Psalm 95 and verse 2. Let us come before love's presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto love with psalms. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon love's shoulder. And love's name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Remember, God is love. Of the increase of love's government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of love will perform this. Mm. Isaiah 40, verse 11. Love shall feed his flock like a shepherd. That's what he's doing right now. Love shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Isaiah 40, and verse 29. Love gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. Love increases strength. We can holler amen to that. Isaiah 40, verses 30 and 31. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon love shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Mm. Amen. John chapter 6 and verse 57. As the living love has sent me, and I live by love, so he that eats me, even he shall live by me. John six thirty eight. I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of love that sent me. John six twenty eight and 29. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of love? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of love, that you believe on him whom love has sent. Psalm 97 and verse 3, A fire goes before love and burns up all his enemies round about. Psalm 97 verse 6, The heavens declare love's righteousness and all the people see love's glory. Jude verse 21, Keep yourselves or guard yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keep means to guard from loss or injury by keeping the eye upon. So in other words, be conscious of the love of God. Focus on the love of God. Feed on the love of God. 1 John 2, 17, the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of love abides forever. Acts chapter 11, verse 21, the hand of love was with them and a great number believed and turned unto love. God is love. 1 John 1, 5, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that love is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Oh, amen. I love that. Jeremiah 3, verse 15. And I, love, will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Micah, 
chapter 7, verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, love shall be a light unto me. Job 33, verses 14 through 18. For love speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then love openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. That love may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. Love keepeth back man's soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. Oh, wow, that is so powerful. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of love, they are the sons of love. Romans 8, verses 8 and 9. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please love. But you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be the Spirit of love dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ... He is none of his. Romans 8, 7, The carnal mind is enmity against love, for it is not subject to the law of love, neither indeed can be. Isaiah 14, verse 5, Love has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. Amen. Isaiah 61, verse 11, for as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so love will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. Ooh, amen. Isaiah 61, verse 6. You shall be named the priests of love. Men shall call you the ministers of love, and you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves. Romans 8, 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of love. Psalm 55, verse 16, as for me, I will call upon love, and love shall save me. Psalm 105, verse 4, seek love and his strength. Seek love's face evermore. Psalm 107, verse 29, Love maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Psalm 107, verse 20, Love sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Jeremiah 30, 17, For I, love, will restore health unto thee, and I, love, will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Ephesians 6, 10, Find me, my brethren, be strong in love and in the power of love's might. Ephesians 6, 11, Put on the whole armor of love that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 4, 34, I think it is, or 24. Put on the new man which after love is created in righteousness and true holiness. Jeremiah 20, verse 11. But love is with me as a mighty terrible one. Therefore my persecutors shall stumble and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. Ephesians 2.10 For we are love's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which love has before ordained that we shall walk in them. Matthew 5.8 Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see love. Matthew 9, verse 36. When love saw the multitudes, love was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of love. 
Psalm 91 verse 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place of love shall abide in the shadow or the defense, the protection of love. Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of love. John 14, verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I, love, am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 15, 7, If you abide in love, and love's words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Romans 11, verse 32. For love has concluded them all in unbelief that he, love, might have mercy upon all. 1 Corinthians 1, and verse 25. The foolishness of love is wiser than men, and the weakness of love is stronger than men. Psalm 33, verse 12, Blessed is the nation whose God is love and the people whom love has chosen. Zechariah 10, verse 1, Ask ye of love rain in the time of the latter rain. So shall love make bright clouds and give them showers of rain unto every one grass in the field. Psalm 33, 18, Behold, the eye of love is upon them that fear him and upon those that hope in his mercy. Micah 6, 8. Love hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what does love require of thee but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Mm. Zechariah 10, 12. And I, love, will strengthen them in love, and they shall walk up and down in love's name, saith the Lord, who is love. Zechariah 9, 14, And love shall be seen over them, and love's arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord who is love shall blow the trumpet and go with whirlwinds of the south. Romans 14, verse 17, For the kingdom is of love is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hebrews 4, verse 12, For the word of love is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4, 13, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in love's sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of love with whom we have to do. Psalm 19, verse 7, The law of love is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of love is sure, making wise the simple. God is love. Psalm 97, verses 1 and 2, Love reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about love. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of love's throne. Psalm 92, verse 13, Those that are planted in the house of love shall flourish in the courts of love. Okay. I think that was all that I was going to share. Okay. Let me bless you. The Lord bless you and protect you from all evil, especially the assault against your mind, your will, and your emotions in this season. The Lord grant you grace to use this time to pull aside, to rest and be refreshed, to be renewed in purpose and hope and zeal. The Lord lift up his hand upon you for good, to encourage you and to comfort you, to strengthen you, to fortify you. The Lord open your eyes that you may see what is taking place, what your part is, and how to position yourself to be ready 
as he starts causing grace explosions in the earth. The Lord bless you and cause you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers because God is love and his heart is for you to enjoy his love and to be healed, encouraged, comforted, and strengthened because he never changes. He's always the same. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you, you are so kind. And I just want to thank you, first of all, that you've given us a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And I know, Lord, I know that this is part of the grace that you gave us in Christ before the world began because you knew, you knew there were going to be times that were just so hurtful and so devastating in our thinking and, and so stunning uh, in their outcome sometimes that, that your people would struggle. And that's the reason that you encouraged us over and over and over again to look unto you. Look unto you. Look unto you. Because you don't move. You don't change. You are the one constant, the one stability in this crazy world. And you've got a plan. You've always had a plan. And those that will look to you, those that will rest in you, those that will wait, those that will come and position themselves, they see these things before they actually happen. And so they're not moved by what's going on in the world around them because they have a greater source, a greater authority. And I want you to remind your people today, Lord. Encourage them, remind them that you're still on the throne. You're still orchestrating and moving things forward that you have not turned a deaf ear to the cries of your people. But you are a supreme strategist. And you know what it takes to uproot the evil, to expose the darkness. You know what it takes for the Son of Righteousness to rise with such intensity that it leaves neither root and branch for the wickedness that have had their way for so long. You still sit in the heavens and laugh when they gather themselves together against you because you know their rejoicing is short-lived. So I ask you, Father, today to encourage your people, remind them of those truths. Just pour out such grace and such love, Lord, as they hear these verses on love, that they're refreshed and renewed and full of zeal and hope and just an astonishment to their friends and neighbors because of the transformation. I thank you so much, Father, for the third great awakening. I thank you that this is the third day in which you revive us and raise us up and cause us to live in your sight. I thank you that you have declared that the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord, and you're in the process of putting Jesus' enemies under his feet. So be it, Lord. That hasn't changed. We thank you that you are faithful to keep your word. We love you, Abba. We trust you. We trust your timing. We trust your ways. And we move forward, expecting to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Amen. All right, dear friend, you have a wonderful, blessed day on purpose, and I will talk to you later.